Howdy Seekers, I hope you're well. It's been a while since my last video, but there's a good reason for that. Uh, the rains period started a few days ago, so I've been focused on that. I've moved monasteries again. I'm now here in uh, Udon Thani in the city area at Wat Banjik. Um, and I've also been working uh, arduously on Buddhist.cafe. Uh, in the past month, we moved the site from uh, a shared hosting plan to a VPS server. So now we're managing everything on our own. Of course, this means a lot more work, but at least our data and our, uh, the control over our information um, is getting closer and closer uh, to being more and more secure. So this is good. And if you haven't subscribed to uh, Buddhist.cafe, I urge you to do that. Um, it's for any person interested. If you want to become part of uh, our Buddhist community, um, beyond YouTube and beyond social media, uh, you can write articles, you can create groups, you can message other Buddhists, meet other Buddhists, uh, you can join our um, knowledge base, our business network for lay people, and um, we've got other features in there. You can even upload videos on there now. So I welcome you to uh, join in and uh, become part of the community. Uh, just go to Buddhist.cafe. Uh, now, if you can't find it on Google search, that's because we haven't registered on the search engine yet. <laughs> We're going to get around to that, uh, but it's there. So maybe just click the link in the description. It should take you to there. So you just register. Uh, once, you've re once you're into the site, then request membership, and then you can access all the features. Also, this channel, uh, I'm happy to see that now there's uh, we've reached 300 subscribers. I thank you very much for supporting the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, I invite you to subscribe. Um, now, I know a lot of channels always say this, uh, subscribe, hit the like button, da da da, da. It, it does help. Like, in my case, um, because my videos aren't really, I don't monetize my videos, and this was always about uh, sharing Dharma, I guess hitting the like button uh, helps. For some reasons but uh, in my case it helps for just giving me feedback you know even disliking so liking or disliking um, good comments bad comments you know whatever I'm um, you know I'm here to learn as much as everybody else <clears throat> I've never professed myself as one of these know-it-all people I, I don't know it all and uh, sometimes I I'm, I'm sure I get things wrong from time to time probably more more often than not so it's good to have some feedback and it's good to hear what you um, have to say and, and what you want to say and if you have any subjects that you want me to talk about please uh, you know feel free to uh, put it in the comments and, and you know I'll have a look but my aim basically right now is to develop the Buddhist.cafe and develop a Buddhist platform which is free from data selling and data sharing and all this kind of thing and going back to old school internet and um, even though um, I use YouTube and it's a Google company and this and that I really don't agree with how they sell data and all the internal policies and I'm hoping that Buddhist Cafe um, grows so much that I won't have to use these um, social sites anymore and I can just post my videos on there and my articles on there and that's another thing if you join buddhist cafe i have a direct group where you can contact me directly or private message me directly as well um, and you know other members of the community which is an advantage so and there's no charge for it well we'll be opening up a donation soon because um, as you know all websites um you know, need funding, they all cost money. Um, and eventually we want to be able to pay people to upgrade and do better things on the server uh, because we're doing everything ourselves. You know, I have a small little team working and 
we're all working voluntarily uh, for the purpose of creating a place where Buddhists can come and just communicate um, in a in an environment where no data is stolen or shared or sold to third parties and things like this. So I urge you again, if you haven't already, please visit Buddhist.cafe and register. Join join the website. And uh, you can also create your own community. If you're a monk or if you're a layperson who uh, intends on uh, having a project, creating a project of some kind, and you want uh, to meet other people um, who might be interested in helping you or supporting you, you can create a group on the site. You can uh, upload a video and tell the community what you're up to. You might even want to tell us about your Buddhist experience, positive or negative, things like this. So this is what the community is, fo- what Buddhist.cafe is uh, focused on. Now, YouTube, um, you know, there's so many different channels here. There's millions of people. Uh, it gets a bit disjointed and, and lack of focus. So Buddhist.cafe is for people who really want to focus on Buddhism and just have a place where they can communicate and share and share information and learn more too. So that's why we created it. Now, Today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, thoughts. Um, Today I was uh, reflecting on uh, a senior monk once told me, uh, thoughts are powerful. And why he told me this is because one day I was, uh, a few years back, I was kind of wondering whether I should uh, disrobe, whether I should go back to my family because I was thinking about my family and uh, and things like that, you know, uh, quite heavily there for a while. I think I was around two or three reigns at that time. Uh, just for your information, this is my 12 reigns. This is about 10 years ago or something like that. So the answer hit the, the senior monk gave me was thoughts are powerful. And that's always stuck with me up until now. And what the reason why I'm, I'm getting at this uh, right now is because right now uh, media, media, right? Media is there to guide perception, to influence perception, right? So perception is, you know, there's, it's a, it's, you know, I don't know if you could say clearly 100%, but it's a mixture. It's perceptions, thoughts, thinking, all these kind of things. Anyway, when you hear certain reports and certain things on, on in media, whatever media, whether it be uh, social media, newspapers, magazines, uh, news channels, uh, even, you know, even YouTube channels, whatever, whatever you hear, um, it has a effect on your perception, particularly um, if the message is psychologically planned, right? And there's a lot of this going on. I mean, marketing companies um, historically um, and even currently spend millions of dollars trying to work out how to get people to buy, you know, the products of their of their clients and things like this. So there's a lot of psychology involved in this. There's a lot of uh, thinking behind the advertisement or the news message or the agenda, and this frames um, a perception. And this is why you get people uh, going in the thousands to a concert or in thousands to buy a certain product because there's a perception that that product is good, right? And there's also a reputation that guides a perception as well of any kind of uh, I guess, uh, you know, product or service or whatever. So these kind of things guide our mind and we're bombarded by um, information a lot in our society. Now, as a monk, I don't really partake in all that and I don't think most monks do, but as lay people, I guess you've got to be out there and you've got to be paying attention to things or even entertainment if you watch TV you got to be careful because it goes into your mind and it guides your perception. So right now, like, there's a lot of things going on in the world which aren't really positive. And like I say, I, 
I don't give enough uh, attention to this war going on in Russia. And I'm quite disappointed in Western countries continuously se se sending arms and funding to Ukraine rather than trying to uh, create diplomatic talks to come to some kind of negotiation to create peace. It seems to be that they want this war to keep going, which is which is really a shame and it's it's dreadful and it's something that I don't I can't it's hard for me to say now that I'm proud to be Australian or Italian because I'm both because our countries are not um, doing the right thing um, when there's calamity our country should be um, talking about peace and driving towards harmony but it seems to be um, going the other way so how do these things how do we survive in this thing and create a better life for ourselves when it all seems doom and gloom out there well don't let it guide your perception because this is powerful and they know this a lot of psychologists know this a lot of marketing agency knows uh, agencies know this the governments knows this um, it's 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 been going on um, for hundreds of years agenda agenda right and it frames our way of thinking and our perception so the idea is to be strong in yourself and know the truth within yourself. Like in the Thai traditions, um, the senior teachers always talk about uh, Ru'eng, like know yourself, right? And I know we talk about it in Western countries, know thyself, right? And uh, we, we know that that comes also from Stoicism and from Greek um, philosophy, from early Roman Stoic philosophy, of course. Maximus Aurelius talked about this, but from a Buddhist perspective, we go even deeper. And that's the thing of understanding that our mind clings to the five aggregates, right? And one of the aggregates is perception, and it clings to that and sees it as self. So the idea is, if we want to create a better life for ourselves and for others, is not to cling to any perceptions that are incorrect, or, or go downwards, or create more suffering, or more importantly, that are within the um, fr uh, framework, or I guess in the parameters of wrong view, wrong view, right? So right view uh, is essential. And that is a guide of perception as well in the beginning until it becomes part of the wisdom faculty, until you um, share and break away, until the chitta is released from the five aggregates. And this is important, right? So how do you arm yourself when there's all doom and gloom? Don't let it affect your mind. May, you know, guide your mind continuously to peaceful states, to serene states, and guide it through the, the virtues of goodwill, <clears throat> compassion, joy, and equanimity, the four Brahma Viharas, classic, classic Buddhist teaching. But those are important virtues. So we need to guide our mind upwards, guide our mind to, the, to wisdom and truth at all times, um, as opposed to following perception or following agenda driven anything, right? Even social conditioning. Because the problem is we've all been gone through some social conditioning of some kind, whether it be family, uh, from our parents, from our environment, from our schools, uh, from our teachers, good and bad. Um, we've, we've learned good things, we've learned bad things, right? So in, in the practice, uh, why it's important to develop cultivate and develop the practices because we need to purify ourselves and go straight to wisdom faculty. Understand that inside we do have the, the, the capability, the ability to become, uh, I guess, fully, fully awake, fully awake. Now awake, I'm not talking about consciousness, right? Because, uh, consciousness in the, I guess in the modern sense, it, it, talks about spirituality but in buddhism um, consciousness is part the buddha talks about consciousness as one of the five aggregates in fact consciousness is something we need to let go of completely actually go beyond consciousness right because consciousness is part of the i guess the human framework right it's also as you go higher and higher it's it, it's it's a it's a strand that um, the buddha talks about being in the higher heavens as well where there's a state of no form, just pure consciousness, but it's still within the realms. It's still within the three realms of existence, right? Whereas Nibbana is beyond this realm, 
where the mind uh, goes to its true form. Uh, it becomes pure wisdom. Um, and I guess uh, the Buddha talks about light, ar light arising and many other things, energy, wisdom, knowing, certain knowing and seeing. So not that I uh, am professing to be an arahant or know that knowledge, just talk, I'm referring to Buddha's text, uh, Buddha's uh, teaching on this one. Um, so basically, when we have thoughts, if our thoughts, if our perceptions are controlled and we guide them to negative states all the time or to fear, now fear is a way the bully controls us. A fear, fear is a is is a control mechanism, right? But eventually, I think. Sooner or later, any human being shackles fear, but unfortunately, sometimes it could be too late. Many disasters can occur. There's also the authoritative fear that can occur from corrupt individuals, corrupt people in power who, who use that to authoritative fear, and people go along with it saying, well, we had no choice. Well, unfortunately, karma does not forgive this. The law of karma does not forgive this. There's always going to be consequences. That's part of the, the problem we have with dukkha. So our th to guide our thoughts, we need to understand how powerful they are and respect them and respect them and respect the, that the fact that where we, where we direct our thought, where we direct our thought is more important sometimes than even our actions, right? Because it's the, the thought, I guess, the, the, the intention the intention, I guess, is a mixture of thoughts, you know, and and direct and, and I guess a determination. So I guess in a way it is a thought. <clears throat> Maybe not. Who knows? Um, not a hundred percent on that. But I do know that <clears throat> when you direct the mind to something, right, all your actions come after it, right? So for example, you say I'm going to the store, then you walk to the store or drive to the store. So. A thought is powerful because it can, you know, thoughts can keep you going for 30, 40 years. For example, you might have a thought, I want to buy a house, I'll borrow the money, and you might get a 30-year loan. And you and that thought carries you for 30 years until that loan is paid off. That's how powerful they are, right? So a perception can be, um, if someone is under, the, uh, under fear or worry, that can cause um, that person... Um, to do untold things that are negative for themselves and others in society. So we need to understand this, right? We need to understand this ourselves <clears throat> by understanding what our nature is and how powerful thoughts are, right? And what thoughts can do. It's not just a matter of, it's like a, a sharp knife. A sharp knife. If you don't respect it, you will sooner or later, right? But unfortunately, with the mind, it's a little bit more elusive because it's not tangible. Thoughts are they're tangible, but they're not tangible. We, you know, we can we can experience the thought, but we can't grab it, right? But the thing is that happens when we have bad thoughts and we carry them out. There's consequences, right? The consequences, okay, of bad thoughts. It's also the internal consequences. It's not just. Um, for example, if you have a bad thought and you carry it out and then you get the physical consequence, but there's a mental consequence where you just don't feel well and there's a constant depression or a constant niggling at you when you know you've done something. You know you've done something. There's a mental anguish, right? There's mental disparity. There's mental, uh, I guess, uh, you, you know, like a like a downward casting kind of direction, right? And I say that because sometimes you know, the mind, when we're talking, I guess when we're talking in terms of elevation and going to heaven and going beyond that, I guess we're talking in an upward way, in, in a sense, right? It, like up and down, like defying gravity, for example, right? It sounds a bit far out, but, <laughs> you know, none of this thing, none of these things are, easy to explain, but that's not my excuse. The thing is, is that we're dealing with the non-tangible, but it's actually quite powerful. And how do we get to know it? Well, you have to meditate. You have to concentrate. You have to practice. You have to be aware of what's going on in yourself, aware of 
the different strands of the human creation, right? What we are, like the body, the feelings, perceptions, consciousness, fab what fab sankaras are, fabrications. So this is a big study, right? But in essence, though, if you want to deal with what's going out there, it's all doom and gloom. Well, let's look at this for, ex for an example, right? So there's two countries going to war and people keep, feed, keep feeding the fire, right? And that's a perception, right? That's a perception. That's how powerful the thought is. When you have two evil, you have evil intentions, right? It creates problems for a lot of people. Now, if the intentions were aimed at peace and harmony, um, this war could have been over a long time ago, right? But because there's interests involved, there's agenda, right? And there's hate filled, there's a lot of hate in our world, right? This continues and continues and never stops because we're not talking about people being aware of their actions and affecting others. We're talking about people with intentions that don't care about others. See how powerful that is? Imagine if we were all able to turn that around and go in the, in the wholesome direction, how much the, we could turn this around overnight, right? This could be turn, turned, out, turned around overnight. But because, because people aren't aware of the, uh, I guess, the further consequences and people don't care, or, or we could say that people don't care, and there are doctrines that just don't believe in consequences. No karma, no consequences. It doesn't matter. Just do whatever you want. Um, there are, you know, doctrines that just say, do what you want. Do what you want. Or just follow your likes. Or just do what makes you happy. Well, in Buddhism, it's not like that. We don't follow the heart. We follow truth. We follow wisdom, right? We follow Buddhist teachings. So this is very different because it's not about following likes or dislikes, right? The idea is to um, is to whatever happens, there's not there's no discrimination in your mind whether you like it or dislike it. It just is, right? So of course on you know banal levels, there's likes and dislikes and things like this. But what I'm talking about ultimately, ultimately you want to be in that what we call the majjhima, the middle path, right, at all times. So when we're talking about what's going on in the world and, and uh, you know, there's a lot of, seems to be <clears throat> a lot of evil going on, a lot of warmongering going on, a lot of shifting going on, particularly in Western countries. You know, these people aren't responsible um, and... They're affecting everybody in the world, right? Imagine if they were direct, if they directed their thoughts and their intentions to wholesome and goodness, how much better it would be. But that's how easy it is. It's just that they're not because of wrong view. This is what we need to understand as Buddhists, right? As, as people in practice, right? As a summoner, right? We need to understand this thing about directing our mind, right, to the wholesome all the time. No matter what people say or what. What, they, what doom and gloom is going on, we don't let it affect us. We don't let it get in, right? We don't let it get in. What we do is we, what we do let get in is truth, wisdom, you know, right view. We stick with that. We stick with good morals, staunch moral practice, right? We, 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 refute, we take refuge in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha and we take refuge in developing and cultivating virtue, goodwill for ourselves, goodwill for others, right? Now, this is really important, compassion, joy, equanimity. So there's, there's, there's kind of like a, a balance between goodwill, compassion, joy, and equanimity. There's, we need to balance it all. Sometimes we need to abide in equanimity because compassion won't, is not um, appropriate, right? It does not apply in this situation or... Goodwill does not apply in this situation, or joy doesn't apply in this situation, equanimity applies in this situation, or goodwill or whatever, or they all do at the same time, etc., etc., right? Because sometimes, um, you know, helping someone, sometimes you, you have to do nothing to help someone. Sometimes you have to do a lot. It's all, you know, it all it's all horses for courses and it all depends, right? But how this works, I guess, in the 
grand scheme of things when it comes to thoughts is because the intention uh, is what drives you to do what you do or every day what we do every day comes from the intention and it comes from the wants that you want the, the needs that you have the needs that you have are kind of the, the base and then of course there's the wants and then there's the likes and then there's the dislikes and then there's the hatred and greed and then there's all these other things on top of that so if your intention is not line in line with right view and in line with um, I guess uh, morality already it's it's going to steer in a in a really bad direction or not not such a good direction downward direction so this is very important because that that is the seed of the action is the intention right so and and this is what drives the thoughts so in order to not get affected by the doom and gloom um, the doom and gloom news um, or people doing um, you know evil actions the idea is not to get into that fear because or worry or even too much thinking because in the end right uh, the Buddha told uh, Angulimada to stop right stopping is just letting go completely right where and and I guess in the deeper sense is where the the mind the chitta releases itself from from uh, from the five aggregates right where it uh, where dukkha ceases okay now this being the case it's not holding on to anything so whatever information's out there you just don't hold on to it and you move on you're not holding on to anything now this is quite an advanced and deep uh, I guess state of being or uh, I guess a uh, way of way of looking at it and I guess only the Arahant knows what that what that what that is right and it's might sound a bit scary but the opposite is is to continuously hold on to fear and worry and let it drive you other rather than come from a place of wisdom come a place from a place of morality right and have a have a strong conviction and confidence in that okay now people fear People always fear, um, you know, violence and things like this. So, you know, I, don't, I think that's totally normal. Even if you hold a stick to a dog, a dog will fear that, right? Or any animal, even a bird knows, knows, knows it when I'm holding a stick. Even when I'm walking with an umbrella uh, to chanting, you can see the animals around, you know, they, 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 see, the, they see the umbrella and they skedaddle, right? <laughs> So the, the thing is about uh, violence and having fear of that, well, the thing is we need to have confidence, but the other thing is letting go of what's going to happen because we don't know. I mean, if we could control it, that would be great, wouldn't it, to an extent, but we can't. So the idea is not to worry about it. <clears throat> but that does not mean living without responsibility. That does not mean letting go of practice and, 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 and uh, following morals and having a good staunch, um, I guess, application in your life. So it means discipline, right? So you let it go, but you've got a discipline that you stick to. So may whatever happens happen, right? May whatever happen happen, but at, this, but at least you have that internal confidence and and. Whatever happens out there, there's no control anyway, right? So this is where we need to direct our thoughts and our intentions at all times is always staying on <clears throat> in right view because right view is powerful and thoughts, thoughts in line with, with the right view, with, with uh, staunch moral, staunch moral application and staunch moral uh, observance, right? This will guide you to, to a good place and everybody around you will benefit as well. And this is how we defeat evil. This is how we do it. Each one of us focuses deeply on side of ourselves and refuses to do any evil, refuses to comply with any evil. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and share with your friends.